Zero Accounting Software 2023. Populate invoice using information from a purchase order or PO. Get ready to become an accountant hero with Zero 2023. First, a word from our sponsor. Well, actually, these are just items that we picked from the YouTube Shopping Affiliate Program, but that's actually good for you because these aren't things that were just given to us from some large corporation which we don't even use in exchange for us selling them to you. These are things that we actually researched, purchased, and use ourselves. Focusrite Scarlet Solo 3rd Gen USB Interface with Software Suite. I've been using a Focusrite for years for my audio needs, before which time I had a USB microphone which plugged directly into the computer. But I think you'll find, as I have found, if you want to increase the quality of your microphone, you will need an interface, and the Focusrite is the go-to interface as far as I'm concerned. I've been using this for years now. It works well, it's easy to use, it seems quite durably built. Because I only do the screen recordings, I only need the one solo interface. However, if you have multiple microphones you need to plug in, or if you have other instruments you need to plug in, you can look at a similar model that has more input ports. If you would like a commercial free experience, consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com where we have many different courses. You can purchase one at a time or have a subscription model giving you access to all the courses. Courses which are well organized have other resources like Excel files and PDF files to download and no commercials. Here we are in our custom Zero homepage. Going into the company file, we set up in a prior presentation. Get great guitars. We're going to duplicate some tabs to put reports in by right clicking the tab up top to duplicate it. Then we're going to right click the tab again and duplicate it again. Back to the tab to the middle. Accounting drop down. Let's open up the balance sheet. And then we'll go to the tab to the right. Accounting drop down. We're going to open up the income statement, but I'm going to pick up this comparative income statement we made in a prior presentation comparing January and February, the current month we are working in being February. Back to the balance sheet, hitting the drop down. We're going to customize that date range, bringing it up to 2023 and the end of 2023, updating the report. Back to the first tab. Now we're going to we're going to now create an invoice from a purchase order that we created. So, let's take a quick look at the flowchart to get the scenario down. This is a flowchart from a screenshot of QuickBooks desktop, but we're just using it to see the normal flow of our forms through a general accounting process or accounting cycle. So we're touching on inventory here, which means we're going to be touching on both the vendor or payable or expense cycle as well as the sales or revenue or customer cycle. So we imagine our story starting out. Someone came into the shop and said, I would like a particular type of guitar. We said, hey, we don't have that guitar. They wanted it from Fender, which is a new vendor. We've never done business with Fender before that time. So we said, hey, we'll try to contact Fender as a new vendor and see if we can get that guitar for you. So we made then a purchase order to request inventory from the new vendor Fender. Now then, of course, we're hoping that that item comes through as inventory. When we receive the inventory, we entered it into the system with a bill type of form, increasing accounts payable and the other side uh, going to inventory. Now we have the guitar in the shop. Now what we would like to do is because we purchased this guitar for a particular customer is turn around an invoice going to the sales side of things using an invoice form to invoice the customer for the, the piece of inventory that we purchased. Now Zero has a nice feature for us to be able to do that fairly quickly by taking the purchase order and basically just copying it over to help us to automatically create the invoice. So that's the strategy that we will use. So let's go back on over here. So if we follow our story in Zero, we're gonna say, all right, what happened? We entered our purchase order. So if I go to the business drop down and we go down to the purchase order items, we had a purchase order. 
uh, here it was approved and then we build out the purchase order for uh, Fender so that there's the one that we build out now we want to uh, turn around and have the invoice let's go to the first tab where we have our purchase order here and let's go into that purchase order notice that if, if it was in this section awaiting approval then it would have a little check mark box here and you'd be able to possibly copy it to a bill like from this screen but we've already billed it out so i'm going to go into the purchase order go into all the purchase orders and go into this fender purchase order here and then we have the options tab up top so i'm going to select the options tab and i want to copy it to and we will copy it this time not to a bill like we did before that's for us paying completing the purchases cycle but now to an invoice so we can turn around and use this to uh, to populate the revenue side of things to generate the revenue so we're going to go here i'm going to say it's a new customer i'm going to say it's going to be new music i don't think we have this customer yet stuff new music stuff generic customer name for us there that's our new customer it's gonna happen let's see if i can get the date right for once get it right man just get it right for once okay get off my back get off my back i'm gonna get the date so two february 22 let's go with that one and standard so the squire pulled in properly that looks good and notice this pulled it in like it should pulling in the sales price rather than the cost you'll recall that when we try to like take the billable items from an expense form using inventory items in other words uh if you if you purchase something purchase inventory with a bill and try to make it a billable item that you can then pull over or assign the cost to the customer then sometimes it gets a little bit tricky that the the item doesn't pull over the proper sales price but rather the cost here this function works quite well as you would imagine it would because this is designed specifically for this usage and we'll recall that this item has two costs related to it or two dollar amounts related to it one the cost side when we set up the item and two the sales side and we're on the sales side of the transaction so this should be the sales amount here all right, so we have a standard invoice then. What's the invoice going to do? Well, it's an invoice. It's going to increase accounts receivable by the 5124, uh, the 5124. The other side's going to be going to revenue, but for the amount that we uh, put in for the sales price, 4880, the difference, the 244 sales tax is going to go into a payable account as a liability and the inventory is going to go down, not by this amount, but by the cost, which the system knows because of the item and the cost of goods sold, the expense related to us uh, selling our inventory is going to go up. Net effect on net income is going to be the sales price, 5124 minus that cost of goods sold. And the sub ledger for the accounts receivable but will be tracking who owes us money by customer and the sub ledger for the inventory will track not only the dollar amount but the units of inventory on a perpetual inventory system let's approve it and check it out and see if that is indeed the case or if i'm a dang liar you're a liar i'm not a liar let's go back on it. let's check it out we'll go to the balance sheet here and say let's dr drill down on the accounts receivable to see what's in it so drilling down to see what's in it we're going to go down and say okay there it is so that's for the full amount uh in the accounts receivable see see i told you so and then if i go to the tab to the right and we update then we're going to go then to the sales tab sales in february and check it out and we should have that one item on there not for not including the sales tax so here it is uh uh there it is not including the sales tax so that's correct i believe let's go back up the difference going back to the balance sheet is on the sales tax payable let's just check it out drilling down to take a look drilling down to go down to the see what's happening receive invoice <clears throat> so there it is on this one okay 
and we know that inventory is going down too so inventory is here let's take a look at that one it's going on the books not at the sales price but at the cost which is known by the system because of the inventory item and so there it is that's not an amount actually on the invoice but known by the system back on over and the cost of goods sold on the income statement again is here it's right there ah yeah right there and so we're going to say new music stuff. There it is. What's the net impact on net income? Well, we had an increase in sales and an increase in the cost of goods sold. The difference between the two is the impact on the income statement. Then if I go back to the balance sheet, we know there should be a sub ledger that ties out to that accounts receivable tracking by customer. Let's make another report, tap into the right, right click on it, duplicate it and make another report breaking it out by customer just so we can uh, double check that concept. So accounting dropdown, we're gonna go into the reports and let's scroll down to the payable and receivable reports. Let's go into the aged receivable summary. Just give us the summary. Just give us the summary if you would so we're i think the date will be okay there so we'll just i just want to break it out by there's our four customers here's the totals that each of them owe us there's the 19 111 50 there it is also uh the 19 1 8 11 50 on the balance sheet i said it wrong did i say it wrong or was it wrong it's not wrong i just said it wrong 19 8 1 1 5 0 19 eight one one five zero okay and we should have a sub ledger for inventory breaking out the inventory items by unit and by dollar amount so let's break that out tab into the right right click let's duplicate again so we can open up another report to double check double check uh reports let's just type in inventory up top to look at our inventory reports and just to note that it is doing behaving as it should so now we have our inventory items on the right and then our total cost is the 6864 that should tie out to what's on the balance sheet and on the balance is this the balance sheet it is where's the 686 there it is 6864 right there it's right in front of your face man okay then let's go to the tab to the left and we can also track of course the inventory the invoice so if I hit the business drop down and look at my invoices internally, now we expect to get paid on the invoices. Here's all the invoices. These are the ones that are open over here awaiting payment. So we can see that. We can also track it by going to the customers, contacts, customers, and we made a new customer. You can see basically the detail of they owe you, which is kind of like our report that we opened up but it doesn't give us that nice total to give us that double check and that verification that this is indeed breaking out more information about the line item on the balance sheet of accounts receivable so here's the new music stuff that's the one we set up pretty generic name uh but i'm still at least it wasn't just customer one right i came i came up with something at least all right so let's open up the trial balance and see where we stand at this point tab into the right we're gonna to go to the accounting dropdown reports and see the trustee trial balance. You can always trust the trial balance because it's a, it's on trial. It's got a trial court to it or something. I don't know. Customize uh, 2023 and update it. Here's where we stand at this point in time. If your numbers tie out, great. If not then uh, if you tied out last time and you were checking the, your numbers and you're off this time, the things we changed were the accounts receivable. Uh, we changed the inventory. We changed the sales tax payable. We changed the revenue line item down here on sales line item, and we changed the cost of goods sold. So if something's off, you would think those would be the thing that's off if you were on last time and you could try to change the date range see if it's a date issue then drill down on the data and possibly down to the source document that invoice perhaps and correct the date if that's the issue